Hey everyone, it's Chelsea with Savannah Wren Studios and I wanted to get started on our Red, Red Moon Women's Circle workshop for January which is on vision boards and intentions. I'm going to wait just a few minutes before getting started, seeing if um, anyone else jumps in. I hope you're having a great day, a great weekend. Um, I'm currently at my house. My children are downstairs, I believe, playing Minecraft uh, or watching their favorite YouTube channel. Um, I am upstairs in my yoga room, also my meditation room, and I am incredibly happy to be here with you today. And tell you, tell a tell a little bit about myself. Um, I am a former European history professor and I am now a business owner to a yoga studio and a um, photography studio. And I've been doing this for about two years now and I'm always finding new ways to enjoy what I do and the Red Moon Women's Circle is my newest project and I really uh, enjoy it quite a bit. So the first thing that I want to do as people are kind of coming in and getting settled is I just want to take a few moments for us to get centered, get grounded, find a little bit of stillness within ourselves as we prepare for this workshop. And it's because this workshop we're going to be doing not only, you know, working on vision boards and talking about the meaning of intentions, but we're also going to be doing, you know, some meditative work to explore what our soul and what the universe might um, want or need from us. So uh, I hope you find a comfortable position. You can be either sitting in a chair or sitting on the floor, or if you would like to, you can always sit, lay on the ground. And if you're in a seated position, you can bring your hands face up or face down on your lap and on your thighs. And I invite you to either close your eyes or soften your gaze as we begin to focus on our breath as it enters through our nostrils flowing down into our chest, filling our belly, and then returning to the space around us. The purpose of this activity is not to control the breath, but just to become aware of what our breath is currently doing and how it feels as it enters our nose and returns back out to the space around us. As you continue to breathe, I invite you to draw awareness 
to the space at your heart center, becoming aware of how your breath pairs with your heart, flowing in concert with one another. Tapping into that seat of your life, core of your existence, this pairing of your breath and your heartbeat. Noticing if this beat or this pulse of your life is quick and shallow or slow and deep. Anything between those on that spectrum is valid. And when you're ready, I invite you to release your focus and draw it back to your breath as it flows in through your nostrils and down towards your belly and returning to the space around you. I encourage you to either refocus your gaze or open your eyes, drawing awareness back to the space around you, back to the room that you are in as we come out of our grounding meditation. And preparing for the work ahead as we move into our discussion of intentions and then finally talking a little bit about vision boards. So my goal for today is that we will, you know, go over, you know, what the difference is between a resolution, a New Year's resolution or a New Year's intention talk about the differences a little bit and then give you some i some you know basic ideas about what your vision board can be for you and what it can do for you before we do a little um, mini meditation for anyone that would like a little bit more time to clarify their new year's intentions and help um, craft and codify a one word intention or theme for their vision boards. And then after we've done the meditation, we'll discuss you know, different options for vision boards before we get down into the crafting portion of our workshop, which would be to work on your individual vision board uh, with the supplies that you have brought to the workshop. If you haven't brought any, that's completely fine. Feel free to listen and to engage, you know, enter comments in the comment section, whatever you'd like to do. I'm planning on posting this on my a YouTube channel so that it will always be available and you can go back and redo the workshop at your own pace when when you have the time or you um, have the supplies and the space to do it. The thing that I wanted to mention really quick is that normally Red Moon Women's Circle uh, takes place up 
as close to the new moon as possible on the Sunday nearest to that new moon. The new moon this year, um, this week, is in Aquarius on Tuesday. And so I dug out my two moon cards to symbolize uh, today's moon as well as Tuesday's upcoming new moon. So right now we are technically woo, a little hard to see. There we go, because of the sunlight. We're technically in the waning moon, almost to the balsamic. And the waning moon is really all about doing shadow work, thinking about what hasn't really worked for you in the last month of the lunar cycle, what can you let go of, what can you release, as well as just taking time to rest, recenter, and regroup. So that's what we're currently in, and the moon is currently in Sagittarius, so there's a little bit of fire element to this waning moon. And so there might be a little bit of passion or drive or um, fieriness to that uh, shadow work that we can engage in right now. Now on Tuesday, like I said, woo, we will be in the moon new, the new moon of Aquarius. And the new moons are really all about planting the seeds, thinking about new um, projects, new endeavors, new things that you want to bring into your life. And with regards to the new moon being in Aquarius, it's really all about, you know, looking to toward the community, your community in particular, to the greater world community, thinking outside the box, breaking down old paradigms, and really focusing on humanitarian seeds and endeavors, um, not only within your life, but in within the lives of others. And I love that uh, Chris, uh, Crystal, that you posted that the the current moon card uh, states your one word intention uh, was that the wa the waning moon, woo, the one that we're currently in, or was it the new moon in Aquarius, which was all about love. It was the release. I love that. It's that's such a powerful um, word, and I can't wait to see what you do with your vision board for it. Um, if anyone else, if you've already, you know, you feel free to share in the comments your words if you already have them. If not, you know, we'll we'll take a little bit of time toward the end to discuss our words and our visions for uh, our boards. So uh, in the Facebook group and the Facebook page, I had you know posted a, quite a bit about the difference between a resolution and, 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 and an intention. And for me, I really feel like a resolution is very fixed and has this energy that is very cagey or um, can trap you. It feel I when I when I used to do my own New Year's resolutions, you know, I used to always focus on I'm going to do. 10 push-ups every single morning and I'm going to run a mile every day and I'm going to cut out sugar and within a week or two my resolution 
was completely in the trash. It was down in the gutter because I couldn't maintain the energy to stay in that rigid format of that resolution. Most of the time, the resolution had to do with um, negative things that I didn't like about myself or trying to fix habits and, and um, routines that I wished I was doing better at. And so there was a lot of more, a lot more punishing myself or trying to get myself to do better in my resolutions. And I always felt like a failure when I didn't meet that resolution. It's the first time, the second time, the third time that I fell off the path of that resolution, I immediately felt like a failure and I just ended up giving up. But three years ago, when I started focusing more on intentions, I found that they were easier for me to maintain and stay true to because they were all about focusing on the energy of the one word that I wanted to bring into my life, whether it was contentment or release or reset or stillness. It was all about me using my creativity and my curiosity to find ways to bring opportunities into my life that resonated with my one word intention. And so I am a big advocate of intentions. The simpler they are, the better they are at resonating with deep within your soul, but also the better they are for you to focus on growth and your growth mindset. The, so most of the time I usually really focus my intentions and by uh, extension, my vision boards on these one word themes. And so for the past two, three years, I usually do some form of a vision board that incorporates my intention so that I can easily see it. And then I hang my vision board somewhere in the house that I will see my vision board every single day. Now, the one that I did for 2019, I put up in my yoga room so that I could see it while I was doing yoga. The last years I had by my um, makeup closet area where every time I was getting dressed, I would see my word. And it, it really helped to reaffirm my commitment to finding those growth opportunities uh, as often as possible. Now, it wasn't always about every day, but it was about trying to be more mindful and more aware of this open-ended contract that I had given myself for the year. Oops, sorry, my bad. I was stretching my leg and ended up hitting the computer. So, if you, um, what I would like to do next is move into the mini meditation to help anyone who hasn't um, really formalized their one word intention or that one word theme for their vision board and give them the opportunity to tap in to not only their true self and that connection 
to their soul, but also to give them the opportunity to connect with the wisdom of the universe should the, the universe um, want to give you a little bit of extra uh, hand. So if you, if you already have your word um, and an idea for your vision board, and so you don't really, you're not really wanting to do the meditation, you know, feel, feel free to just kind of hang out while we do this meditation. Otherwise, I invite you to join me as we settle in to a comfortable position whatever that position is for you. You can sit in a comfy chair. You can sit on the floor uh, in easy pose, which is crisscross applesauce. Or if you would like to be a little bit more comfortable, you are always welcome to lay down on the floor, either on your side or on your back. And we're going to settle in And I invite you to either close your eyes or soften your gaze. Focusing on our breath as it comes in through the top of our eyebrows through our nostril, flowing down through our body, and then returning to the space around us at its own pace. Again, the purpose of this exercise is not to control our breath or to attach judgment. We're just feeling the sensation of the air flowing into our body and then releasing back to the space around us. And when you're ready, I invite you to visualize yourself standing in front of a large cave. You're standing in front of the cave, holding a lantern. Taking a deep breath, you begin to walk into the cave, allowing your lantern to light the way for you as you move deeper and deeper. and deeper still into the tunnel. As you walk through your cave, notice the walls beside you. Are they smooth? Are they rugged? Are there veins of crystals lining the wall? 
Or are they just piles of boulders? As you continue to walk, I invite you to take in your surroundings. Lit by the guiding light of your lantern. And even though you're surrounded by darkness, you feel safe and secure. Guided by your light. And as you move deeper into the cave, you notice that your tunnel has begun to open into a large cavern. As your light illuminates the cavern, take a moment to survey your surroundings, noticing the layout of this cavern, the changes in the terrain, the pattern on the ceiling and on the floor, noticing anything displayed within your cavern, whether it be crystals, stalagmites and stalactites, pools of water, cave creatures. And as you are looking around this room, you notice a small cluster of brilliantly sparkling crystals in the middle of your cavern. And as you walk toward the crystals, the light from your lamp illuminates them, sending fractals dancing across the walls of your cavern. How many crystals do you see in front of you? What do they look like? I invite you to feel them, to hold them, as many as you like or as few as you like. Drinking in every sensation that the crystal has to give to you. And as you're observing this collection of crystals. I invite you to find one, maybe two, that you feel connected to, as if the crystal is singing a song just for you. I invite you to hold this crystal in your hands. For a moment. And then when you're ready, I invite you to begin your journey back out of the cavern higher, 
through your cave. Still moving higher. Slowly returning to the surface of the earth. Higher still toward the beginning of the cave. Still holding your lamp and your crystal in your hands. You begin to see light shining into your cave as you become closer and closer to the surface. And finally, you emerge into the sunlight. And I invite you to look at your crystal that's still in your hand one last time, this time in the sunlight, in the light of day. Does it look different? Does it look the same? And as you're looking over your crystal, you notice that there's something trapped inside of it, something waiting just for you. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your crystal, however you see fit, releasing that message that's just for you. What does it look like? Does it say anything? This message comes from the deepest part of you, guided by the universe. And when you're ready, I invite you to take a deep inhale in, pausing at the top of the breath. And then as you exhale through your mouth, I invite you to say the one word from your message that resonates the most with your soul. Inhale, holding at the top, and exhale, releasing and saying your intention to the world. I invite you now to refocus on your breath, releasing the guided meditation, releasing your cave, releasing your crystal, releasing your message. Focusing on the feel of your breath. And when you're ready, I invite you to either open your eyes or refocus your gaze, bringing your awareness back to yourself, back to yourself in the room. That sun has decided to come through. <laughs> right at this time. All right. Now that we have talked a little bit about 
intentions and we completed a mini meditation to help solidify or reaffirm our intention going into our vision boards. I'd like to just really quick discuss, you know, some options on how vision boards can work, um, how they can be constructed, as well as what they can do for you throughout the year. And in the Savannah Renkula uh, Facebook group, I had posted some examples that were very um, structured and very organized. Uh, despite being a Virgo, I am not as organized as one would think. So those type of very rigid structured vision boards don't really work well for me. And so I tend to be more drawn toward um, abstract boards that are more about drawing my focus toward my intention rather than listing out different opportunities or um, goals that I'm hoping to bring into my life. So I just wanted to really quick share some of my old ones. So this one right here, it's a little bit hard to see, but this was my uh, 2019 vision board and it is set up to be more like a um, an astrology wheel. And it has different things that I'm looking for in my life, family, career, health, friends, finances, adventure, create creativity. And it was just ideas that I wanted to focus on and bring into my life. Now, this one is a little bit more structured than my 20... 20 vision board and you'll definitely see the difference so last year's vision board is much more abstract it's completely covered with words and images that i took from different magazines and it's really focused not only on resetting but it's focused on shadow work to help plant the seeds of inspiration, the seeds for my business and for my interactions that I want to take in 2020. Now, while 2020 was um, a dumpster fire of a year for most of us, in general, I would say that the intention that I had last year for resetting and replanting did come to fruition. I spent a lot of time last year focusing on what I really wanted to do with my business, what I really wanted to do with my family, and what I really wanted to do with my health in particular. And so it was a highly, uh, impactful vision board for me. This year, I, when I meditated, I came up with the word leap for my intention for this year. And, you know, I was kind of taken aback, confused. I had never had a in a new year's intention quite like that before and i was like okay what do you mean by leap and what came to me was take the leap you know leap of faith leap into the new year just let every everything that's holding you back go so that you can take 
those first steps, that first leap into all the things that you want to do. And so what I came up with is less, a little less abstract than the one that I had last year, but it's still pretty ab abstract compared to what uh, some of the examples I'd given. So I have the myself jumping off of a cliff toward the things that interest me for next year, you know, taking that leap and releasing myself from the things that are holding me back. So the, when it comes to vision boards, literally the sky is the limit. It, they are very personalized. Um, the, they're, they're very personal endeavors and personal projects, and they're supposed to be and supposed to resonate with you on a very deep level. I mean, anyone can create a list of activities that you want to tick off the to-do list or the checklist. It's what the purpose of a vision board is, is to be a guiding factor and help you constantly come back to your intentional word and your intentional thought around what you hope for for this year whenever you're you lose a little bit of mindfulness and awareness and you're thinking too much of the past and too much of the future this vision board can help you come back and say oh yes that that was what i was wanting and come back again and again and again as much as you need to do what you are interested in doing and bringing in and inviting in whatever feels right for you this year oh, just scoot back just a little bit there we go <laughs> So I, we are at the point where we can start working on our own personalized vision boards. And, you know, my goal is that we just take a little bit of time to work on our own vision boards. Maybe if you're interested, we can share the progress that we've made in the next 15 or so minutes. Um, I'm basically looking at having the workshop end around four o'clock. So in the next 15 minutes, we want to take a little bit of time so that you can get started on crafting your vision board, how, you know, and getting ideas for it and, you know, plotting out or organizing some of your crafting supplies. Uh, some of the crafting, crafting supplies that I have with me is I prefer to use um, watercolor paper rather than a traditional cork board or traditional post paper, po post board paper. Uh, be and that's because one, it's a clean surface and two, it's really, really thick. So it's like working with uh, heavy duty cardboard, not cardboard, uh, cardstock, but it's a little bit larger. And what I'm planning on doing with my own personal vision board is I cut out a bunch of different mm -hmm. words and phrases to go onto my vision board. I have a number of images to go onto my vision board in different places based on the vision that I had had during my own meditation session. And to go along with that, I have my, 
my drawing pencils because that's how I decided to stylize this. And I have a nice pair of scissors and a little glue stick to help me glue on my magazine uh, clippings. Now, you don't have to use magazine clippings in particular, um, especially, you know, it's always easier if you have old magazines laying around um, and it just kind of saves you a little bit of money so that you don't have to go and spend tons of, of cash on buying brand new magazines. Um, you know, keeping it simple, keeping it with what you have. If you, you know, don't have, happen to have magazines at home, I, in particular, some of the things that I was wanting to focus on for the year <laughs> is, you know, my practice, my health, my relationship with my children, and my business. And so what I did is I actually printed off the little images that I wanted that were more personal to me because the more personalized and individualized your vision board is, the more it resonates with you. And so, yeah, I do have, you know, some um, word clippings from magazines, but I also wanted to incorporate images that are personal to me. And, you know, this is just how I see my vision board for this year yours is going to be completely different it's going to be completely unique to you and i am all for the more unique the better in my opinion because if it's personal to you you're going to identify it on a deeper level so if you have your one, one word intention, your crafting supplies with you, we can get kind of started and take these next 10 or so minutes to work on our vision boards. And at four o'clock, if you are interested, um, feel free to share in the comments and I can describe what your vision board looks like for others, maybe give others a little bit of ideas to go along with theirs. And then I'll definitely show you how mine has been um, taking form and taking shape as I'm working. Excuse me. So the first thing that I did for mine was that I took my watercolor sheet and I drew my cliff and I kind of shaded it in a little bit. But what I decided to do is that if I'm taking a leap, I'm not taking a leap into the forest, which was what my original drawing had suggested and so I was like no if I'm jumping off a ledge I'm jumping into the ocean I'm jumping into a pool of water that I can go swimming in because that is what I love to do and so I created the ocean with a lit with the sun boop right there to go along with it and so far crystal her, your word is release, and Amanda, you have organize. Oh man, I wish I could hold on to that one. I, you know, that sounds like a, a really great word for this year. And Ginger, yours, your w intentional word was resiliency, and that one, oh, I just, I absolutely love all three of your intentional words um anyone else that is watching 
you know, feel free to put yours into the comments as we're working on our, uh, our vision boards. And I will give you, a, you know, some time and I'll, I'll, you know, not interrupt your creative session. And say, and with this, you know, really play with it, be curious, you know, just really let your intuition and your heart guide you, see where it takes you. It doesn't have to be perfect. Honestly, literally nothing is ever perfect. And if it is, it is not part of reality. <laughs> so, you know, give yourself grace to just enjoy the process.
So we got about three minutes or so. See, I know we won't get done and I'm not pushing you, you know, to have it all complete. You know, we're just working on trying to get that, that vision board started and seeing what comes up and how your intentional word is inspire, inspiring you as you create your vision board. So William asked, can you take pictures of your old boards and put them in the comments? Let me, s I should be able to. Let me see if I can. I know that I've shared them. I've shared them on other posts. Um, So let me see if I can post them for you. See, it doesn't look like I can post it at this time. But I can definitely uh, reshare the images uh, into the post later using my computer. That shouldn't be an issue. I just think it won't let me do it live. Um, in previous workshops, I've been able to add photo comments after the fact. But I will definitely add them um, for anyone that wants to see. All right. Well, it is four o'clock and I wanted to show you my final vision board. Now, uh, the only reason that mine is actually finished at this moment is because when I came into the workshop, I had already um, thought about my 
intentional word. I had already planned out my vision board and I had all the supplies with me. Now, if that isn't what happened with you, that's perfectly fine. That's completely valid. No worries whatsoever. You do your vision board at your pace, not my pace. So here is my finished board. Up a little bit. Woo -hoo. So I have over here the words that, that I'm leaving behind that are keeping me from taking my leap. And here I have a girl leaping toward the stars, toward taking that leap of faith, coming through these intentional words to get down to what I'm going to focus on this year. And what I had down at the bottom is I want to focus on taking the leap with my Savannah Ren Studio business, taking the leap with my practice, my personal practice and my personal journey, taking the leap to focus on my children and their spiritual journey, leaping into my health, my community, and my own intentional healing. And so my plan is to hang my vision board in my bedroom, most likely on my dresser because I tend to look at my dresser every single day and it will be a um, functional, healthy reminder of what I'm focusing on this year. Does anyone want to share in the comments, you know, what, how your vision board is starting to take shape, um, what direction you're going in. And then after the video is over, you know, feel we can start, we can actually start a, a post where you can share how the progress of your vision board is going. That way other people can see how your board is going. Um, and of, of course, you don't have to share. This is an open invitation if you so choose. I'll say Amanda says that because my word was organized, I am starting it in a notebook. It is also because I did not come prepared, which pff, no worries, um, that she is coming up with areas of her life that she wants to organize a little bit better and thinking about how I'll go, she'll go about organizing them. I think that is a fantastic, um, start for your vision board uh you know i didn't really mention it but vision boards can be text only they can be uh image only and it really just depends on your style of and your aesthetic and so i love that idea i think that's great amanda crystal said that she currently has the word release stenciled in the middle with worry, control, and anger below it. And then it, there's clusters of words about 
her heritage and her community, as well as action words to help her release. And then she has two pictures of forests where she likes to relax the most. I think that this is going to be a great visual representation of your intention for release. And I cannot wait to see how it blossoms as you're going along. I really think that's going to be a great uh, poster board for, for you, especially with your, your style and your aesthetic as well as your ability to see that, see and construct that art from deep within inside yourself with your, your own personal endeavors. So if anyone else wants to share, feel free. Does anyone have any questions or last um, thoughts? Oh, Ginger wrote, I struggle with art and thinking today. Um, I'm working on it and I'll get to work soon. No worries. You know, this workshop was all about you and so the fact that mine is done just means that I had all week to focus on what I wanted to do so that it would be done during the workshop. You do your vision board at your pace with your style so that it is meaningful to you. You know, my vision board is not meaningful to anyone else but me other than, you know, hey, Chelsea did a pretty, a pretty decent job with that cliff, considering that she thinks that she can't draw worth a darn. <laughs> so, you know, if you're struggling, it is absolutely okay to struggle. It is okay to have artist block or writer's block. It does not mean that you are a failure, that you can't do it, or that you are an imposter. It just means that you are human and that is the only thing that we can be in this world. So I want to thank everyone that attended. I really enjoyed working with you all and I hope to see you either at my first Messy Yoga Mom workshop. It's also going to be this exact same format uh, on Facebook Live, but it will be on January 31st at 3 p.m. And we're going to be talking about emotions um, as they apply to, you know, not only parents but uh, and children, but just as ourselves as people and how uh, how and what emotions can teach us in our daily lives and how we can process them in a safe and constructive way. The upcoming uh, Red Moon Women's Circle will be on February 7th. That's also a Sunday at 3 p.m. And we're going to be talking about how we can uh, honor and celebrate the cycles in our lives. Now, whether that applies to you uh, as a woman, a menstruating person, or as um, someone who enjoys the seasons, we're going to get into that um, over the coming next coming weeks. So I want to thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for joining me at this workshop today. And with everything that I do, I always 
want to end my events the same way. That the light and the darkness is within me recognizes and honors both the lightness and the darkness within you. And I honor and respect you for who you are and for where you are right now in your life and on your journey. Until next time. Love y'all.